call this meeting to order. The first item on the agenda is the presentation of the colors by the Gainesville High and JROTC. Please stand. Oh, Mark. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Carry. Color. Ready. Cut. Cut a march. March. Hello, I'm Dr. Kremlin, and I have the pleasure to introduce the classified uh, Heroes of the Word uh, Award for Satine. Um, so first, I just want to say personally that this person is an overall excellent role model for our students and work with them day in and day out, just in the office, office, in my office, and I uh, get to see him all the time. And he always answers my text, so I thank you for that. And here's some um, things that our staff I said regarding Mr. Josiah Bowers. Josiah is more than just a tech support CAA. He is visible and active in all that goes on in our school. He assists teachers with projects that they want to do. He creates videos for our students to share important technology information, such as caring for the Chromebooks, internet safety. He looks for ways to improve the systems at our school. He looks out for our students and our staff. He is a true gem. We are so lucky to have. 
and those staff members said Josiah works diligently to make sure that our staff and students are prepared with the devices needed to provide daily instruction. He is personal and always willing to help out when the need arises. He completes all requests in a timely manner and is easy to communicate with when we have any questions. He is an asset to our team and we are lucky to have him at CAA. Thank you, Josiah. <clears throat> Our next honored member of staff is Parker Park. Car. <laughs> so I'll talk real slow. Emily Coburn has been our counselor since 2019. So at the height of when everything was closing, she was coming in excited to be a school counselor. Um, we had some great things said about her by our staff. She's an amazing team player. She is very involved in every aspect of our student support, academic, social, and emotional. She created black lessons for SEL for to meet the needs of all students and thought for Thursdays that started out as a pandemic um, approach to having counseling at home turned into a continuing thing at Centennial. We have them every week. She coordinates community resources like Backpack Love and holiday support. And she's just there to support our staff no matter what. Um, Ms. Melbourne is, uh, she goes above and beyond to help all of our students. She's also our PBIS coach. She comes to student every day to serve our students 110%. Uh, she's developed positive, uh, sorry, she's developed systems to provide needed support um, with tracking and measuring, which is huge in our daily world. We need to see how they're progressing. She aims to serve the whole child, and it is an invaluable a member of our CAA team, and she's still in the parking lot. <laughs> she might be at the door. Somebody open the door and see. And there she is. Next up is Dr. West Rose of the Nova. He will be introducing the heroes of the herd for a minute. Thank you very, very much for the honor to be able to come today and present to you our heroes of the herd from Minota. I've got this dance here with me, my assistant principal, and always helping. Uh, I'd like to go ahead and ask our classified hero of the herd to come forward. And would you give her a big hand? Her name is Yasmin Villain. I just thought it would be nice and good for all to read these nice things about you that folks have said. And uh, we want to, of course, give honor where honor is due. Ms. Valero was new to our school this year, and she has made quite the impression on our staff. So I'd like to share with you, we had several nominations, but I just chose a couple of the comments that came in, and I'd like to read them in honor of, of you. 
And so it says, um, although this is Ms. Valero's first year to notice, she has quickly become our go-to person. She started the position with such enthusiasm and excitement. Her positive attitude has been contagious to the rest of the staff. Parents are comforted knowing Ms. Valero will help with any questions they may have. She's taken the initiative to order and provide ad hoc writing materials for our families. She is willing to translate any and everything, and she does it all with lightning speed. Ms. Valero is the epitome of a team player and is just what I know that needed. I should perhaps mention that she serves as our parent hall coordinator, and she has, uh, just as that comment said, done a great job. The last comment I'll share with you from a staff member says, Yasmin is one of a kind, and I don't know what we've done so wrong without her. She is always so bubbly and welcoming to everyone involved in the school. You can feel the positive energy over the phone and through every task, big or small, that she's working on around the school. The staff, students, and parents all love Yasmin. Yasmin goes above and beyond in everything she does and is always cheerful while doing it. We are so fortunate to have Yasmin as part of our you know, family. And then finally, I could make a long, long list of the things that I appreciate about Ms. Valero, but I've just got five quick things that I wrote out because I thought I need to share some of my thoughts also. You know, it's kind of similar to what we've already heard. So number one, I've noted that she is an above and beyond kind of person. I like having those kinds of people around because if it needs to be done, she's ready to do it and she's going to go above, she's going to go the extra mile. We like having those kinds of people. Number two, she knows, excuse me, she shows kindness and care for everyone who comes in our office. Sometimes I hear people say, oh, I really love people. Well, I'm not so sure they're convincing of their actions, you know, but Ms. Valero doesn't just claim to love them. She shows her care and her love, and everyone who's in our office sees and knows that. Number three, she smiles and radiates a contagious kind of joy in our office. And boy, do I appreciate someone who can spread joy. Isn't that wonderful? Number four, she is ready to help anyone with anything. I like that. I've never heard her say, well, that's not my job. Oh, that's not my job description. If you need help, she's going to be there and she's going to do what she can to uh, help you out. Finally, she sees her job, and I think this is big, as more than just a job, but it's an opportunity to impact people and to be a positive influence to those around her. Would you join me in congratulating Ms. Valero as I hear I wanted to also acknowledge her fantasy with her tonight. We don't stand and just wave so we can see. If you want to take a picture, please do. So, Each day. Another colleague said this 
Mrs. Ligon always has a positive attitude. She is reliable and goes beyond her job. She buys and stocks the school store as needed and works with our PBIS and counsels kids and much, much more. She is an asset to our school. I also wrote down five quick statements, though I can list many more, to describe some of the things that I really appreciate about Ms. Ligon. I noted number one, that she loves and cares for students, not just in word, but in deed. There it is again, it's, it's an action that we see out of Ms. Ligon. And sometimes that action is behind the scenes and not as obvious perhaps to the masses, but I see a lot of things that she does behind the scenes. I'm sure not everything. I'll bet you Rusty sees even more than I do. This is a hardworking woman, I appreciate what she does. Number two, she's never off the clock. You think you can clock out and go home and just spend some family time? And she does that all she needs to do that. She should do it more, okay? But if I need her or someone else needs her, my family needs her, she's ready to help. And I appreciate that about her. She's very knowledgeable. Um, I like knowing that I can lean in on her expertise and I lean from what she has learned in her years of practice. And it helps me feel like I'm in a better position to do a better job. And I, I appreciate your expertise and your knowledge. Fourthly, she knows how to match up to foster trust with students. How important is that for a counselor? There's something about Ms. Ligon's demeanor that I've seen the hardest of children who will soften up because they trust her. And that's a great quality that she brings to our school. And then finally, she surely couldn't do what she does except that she is a master of multitasking. There is no point in the day that she isn't juggling four or five different things at one time. And she does them all with such grace and makes it look easier than it really is. So uh, I appreciate you, Ms. Ligon, and I wish you one more time. Join me in congratulating you all these questions. Welcome to Ms. Ligon. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Uh, we had seven people sign up to speak uh, all on the subject of GHS basketball uh, due to the uh, load of the rest of the meeting. We were going to allow three people to speak. Uh, we're assuming that they are all in consensus on the same topic after they have spoken. I will ask that the, anybody in support of their comments stand up. That way, everyone has a voice uh, in, in uh, letting us know your support for the topic. Uh, those people will be Augustus Vernon, Kimberly Fulmore, and Jimmy Jackson. Uh, Mr. Marine, would you like to start, please? Good evening. Good evening. First, I'd like to thank you for the opportunity here today to speak with you. I'm pretty sure you guys have a very full agenda, so I appreciate the time. My name is Augustus Green, and I'm a part of Omega Sapphire Fraternity Corporate. One thing we do in the city is we mentor students between um, elementary all the way through high school and beyond. And in doing so, lots of the students that we mentor are also part of different sports programs. And we, we engage into their life and building their character by involving ourselves with teachers, coaches, and any other uh, individual that happens to influence with them. And a lot of our students that we mentor are active. And, and being that they are athletes, we had the opportunity to meet Mr. Graham and understand the impact that he had on the life of the students that we mentor. We worked very closely with him in developing a plan that helps build the character of each student. And the students that we work with that is a part of his program speaks very highly of him and really appreciate the effort and the concern that he has and share with them. And working Together with him, we build a process that has been successful for several years. And having heard the news recently that he was dismissed from the job, I have to say for us it was one surprising, and secondly, it was very devastating because we feel like the children and us who have partnered with them have lost a, a very good partner, and the students themselves have lost a very good mentor. So my purpose for coming today was one to inform you about our relation, working relationship we have with Mr. Graham, and to let you know the students' perspective of the impact that they have in our life. The second reason why I'm here today is I want to get a clear understanding of the dismissal process. It is my understanding that any termination or dismissal of a coach um, has to go through a certain process for the approval. And one of the steps of the process, my understanding is, is that it has to come before this board before it's final and approved. Am I correct in that? Uh, Mr. Green, we hire and, and terminate education positions. The, the coaches are hired and terminated by the athletic director. Just to be clear, it does not come in. The process does not include the school board. The coaches are supplemental responsibilities and they're not voted on by school board. So, so Mr. Graham's position as an educator is still in that. Okay. If I understood you correctly, you were saying that to terminate a coach, it does not, it does not require the agreement of the school board. Correct. Then is it my understanding that the process for termination is just the recommendation of the athletic director? There's a conversation between a few different people involved. Um, and so that is, it, it depends on the position itself. But the coaches over the last five years, it has been based on the recommendation of the AD, then brought to the high school principal and myself. Okay. And this, Termination been brought to your attention. Yes, sir. Have you given your 
if, if will your stamp of approval for the termination? Have you reviewed it and, and satisfied that the process was followed and everything is in place? At the time, yes. But also know with what we've learned over the weekend, we had a great period and a player meeting last night. And some more information has become available, as I'm sure some will tonight as well. And what I'd like to do is take all that information together as a part of our process um, before you know taking into consideration as far as what we've heard over the weekend, what we heard last night uh, from the parents and players, but then also from yourself and the speakers tonight. So is it feasible to believe that after the review of this board, if you you see the need to reinstate or to reconsider, that would be a recommendation from this team. Yes, sir. I will say I'm not coming to the front It will be my communication back uh, to Coach Graham, uh, to the AD, to the principal, and then we'll follow those channels back. You say we will not come, but we will come back. Right? Yes, so, so we will not be voted on publicly because it is an extracurricular responsibility. Okay. All right. Well, with that being said, again, I appreciate your time. Thank you for hearing me. That what you hear tonight, what you glean since the time, that it would, would make an impression. I just want to leave you with this. Mr. Graham has been. Awesome when it comes to working with the children and working with us. Thank you very much.
we want to know who evaluates him, how often is he evaluated, and is his evaluation on file somewhere that they can be accessible to people. I know we're not, you can say we can't see that this person or whatever, but we need to see that. Because again, y'all have the three ABCs: attendance, behavior, classroom success, and you have to see. That's what we kind of stand on. In the newspaper on Friday, when the thing went, went out, the athletic director made a statement in the paper and he said, We have a standard of excellence at Gainesville. Our goal has been and will always be to build on that legacy. My question is, what legacy is he building on? We have so many students out here. And only thing I can say is, if y'all know that Chuck has inspired you, nurtured you, challenged you, and prepared you, please stand up. Jimmy Jackson, Gainesville High School alum and former coach. This season was not for Coach Brown Field. This season was a Gainesville City System Field. We've had a lot of good athletes stop playing basketball over the last four years who could have become good basketball players because Gainesville City System has not given our students our student athletes access to the tools necessary in order to be successful basketball players. The standard of excellence that people like to throw around comes from hours upon hours upon hours of work on the skills necessary in order to be a good basketball player. Gone are the days of pickup basketball at E. Butler. Since its closing, the city was never able to find space to build a community center like the one the kids enjoyed in North Hall, Flower Branch, and East Hall. Gone are the days of the players having access to Bear Street Gym because heaven forbid the gym goes through wear and tear because it's being used. Gone are the days of a spring recreation basketball league at the Boys and Girls Club, where middle and high school athletes could go and play basketball outside of the season. Gainesville City System does not allow student athletes who are not a part of the system to practice basketball in their gyms. This makes it impossible, impossible to put together summer travel basketball teams that our student athletes can play together during the summer. One, I repeat, one losing season by a black head coach in the losing job. But the student athletes have been losing for years when it comes to basketball due to the neglect by the Gainesville City School System. Why are coaches who have been afforded many more losing seasons by a white AD? makes the situation look racist. And that is embarrassing coming from a Gainesville High School alum. Aside from being a good coach, Coach Brand is a great mentor, positive role model, and the players are better people after having him as a coach. <laughs> His impact on the community will be greatly missed. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jackson, for enlightening us on uh, the lack of resources. Um, it's clear that all three uh, speakers. I consensus on the support of uh, the men 
this basketball coach, if you do have that support, I ask you to stand up. Everyone who's sticking around, I'd like to entertain a motion to adopt the agenda. Motion to adopt the agenda with the addition of an executive session for personnel and student matters. I've got a motion by Mr. Schmidt, second. I've got a second by Mr. Mitchell. All those in favor? Motion carries. Uh, Mrs. Price, would you like to tell us about all the new things for my SCP? Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. I'd like to talk a little bit about what's going on at Centennial. And first, I'd like to start with the challenge and the peer section. I'd like to thank the school board for their support of the innovative model that has allowed 33 of our staff members to participate in courses through Brown University to gain their ESL endorsement prior to this school year. We have 38% of our certified staff that are in, we're currently endorsed in the SOL. At the end of this time, we'll have 88% of our certified staff members. So we're very excited about the opportunity that's been provided through this initiative. Um, we've been able to do have our staff really collaborate and engage in meaningful discussion about the SOL practices that are going to be most impactful for our students. So well, this is from our PE teachers, from our gifted teachers, and kind of the teachers at every level. So very excited about that. I think that we are preparing our teachers to challenge our students in a way that we have um, maybe not been mindful of before. So we're excited about that. And then for the inspire and nurture section, I'd like to take the liberty of speaking to that. So these two characteristics with a bit of a twist. So as you go there, I'm kind of challenging you know, myself. In early November, I got some health news that was not what I was expecting. Um, the months of November and December are a little bit older. So I would like to thank uh, Mrs. Kennedy 
www.com ship with Stephanie and I'm making sure that our school was running smoothly and I'd like to thank our staff members because they stepped in and filled a lot of gaps that um that appear I think we're amazing but we spend a lot of time talking about how we're nurturing our students but um, I'm going to talk right now about how they nurture and inspire me The students and staff of Centennial have demonstrated true acts of love and kindness towards me and my well being. They wear things on Wednesday and see them on Tuesday and come be babies on Thursday for the FEMA day. And um, they've been a great support. So I just wanted you to know that they are more inspiring our children. The future in Gainesville well is bright. Our, our kids are our nurturers too. So thank you for your support of me. We have that one. I appreciate that. Thank you, Mrs. Carson, uh, Dr. Roach. Uh, may I have one more question for you, Mr. Uh, Mrs. Carson, we do a very bright career in the job. Thank you. I personally, I thank uh, Dr. Crumley for saying that you're teaching how to care for Chromebooks. We heard you. I hope you might share that with all your elementary colleagues because uh, we've made a huge, huge investment in Chromebooks. So if you don't, if you haven't shared it with all the other schools, would you please? Thank you. Dr. Rich. I'm glad to please have an opportunity to share with you this evening a little bit of good things from all out of the matter. But before I go, I would like to say thank you to Ms. Carson and the inspiration that she has provided to her colleague as she's gone through some difficult times. And we are so pleased to see her really well. Thank you, Ms. Carson, for being strength and inspiration for the rest of us today. Um, I wanted to share with you about uh, nurture and challenge. Those are two categories of our mission and burden. I'd like to take a moment and talk to you about nurture because um, you've heard it said, and it's going to be true that no one really cares how much you know, so they don't know how much you care. And to that nurture, he speaks to our care for students. And so it's a very important part of the mission. And there are many things that are happening across our entire district that I think speak to that birth. Uh, I'll mention just a couple from our school tonight. Um, we do at our school. Uh, you saw my counselor here earlier this week. Our check in, check out program is set up with the express purpose of providing extra support, extra care for some students who have high needs. So there are adults in that building that are connecting with them on a daily basis just to check on them. How are things going? You know, what can I do for you? Let's talk about your goals today. That check in, check out is a great way of nurturing some of our needy students. Um, I actually also have listed the East Long Dorset opportunity that you afforded to our staff. I'll put it in the nurture category because I do feel like that when our teachers are equipped with the knowledge that comes with East Long Dorset, it would put them in a better position to care for the unique, need, the unique needs of these all learners. And so I thank you for extending the opportunity to our teachers, and we too have many who are participating, including myself. And so I appreciate that. Uh, we have facilitated a book study this school year. Uh, all of our uh, staff across the district were given the book, The Seven Steps to a Language Rich Interactive Classroom. And so uh, Ms. Scriven, our instructional coach, was able to help facilitate a uh, book study with all of our teachers using that book as a foundation of that study. And that is uh, also brought to life. I think they're helpful as we care for and nurture our children and our students. We have extracurricular activities at the school that I see as being a part of that nurture, the running club. You affirm students and things that they're good at. You know, students like to be affirmed. People like to be affirmed. When they feel like that they're successful at something, they tend to enjoy being a part of that more. And so having opportunities like running club at our school gives kids a chance to feel like, hey, look at what I can do, what I'm a part of. So I appreciate that we have opportunities such as that. This week, I don't know, it was last week, we had are in those not talent, which is another way of affirming students for their uh, unique gifts and talents. Oh, we saw it all. We saw pantsers and 
we saw acrobats and we heard singers and violin players, and it was just a beautiful expression of talent from across our student body. And I think that's another great way that we were able to nurture students. Our parent conferences, we uh, deliberately scheduled parent conferences twice a year with the goal of meeting with 100% of our parents. We, or we have learned through the Zoom uh, era of life that it's okay sometimes to do those conferences by Zoom or by phone. And so that's another part of our care, is partnering with the parents and the children we serve. Um, but the last thing I'll mention this day was the class meetings. Uh, the class meetings actually were other schools that were doing this before we started it. So I kind of I like to steal the ideas from um, uh, but we can found the class meeting that we have each morning gives an opportunity for a teacher to really foster a sense of family and belonging, and they're able to address things that are relevant and important in minds and lives of our students. They do it um, and they anchor it to the core essential program that has a lot of uh, uh, character traits that we emphasize each month, and it leads to meaningful conversations and uh, rewarding relationships between our teachers and the students, and between the students and their own peers. So those are several of the things that we're doing at the, uh, address that nurture of our mission. The other part I've chosen is challenge. Obviously, it's great that you should love children and nurture them and care for them, uh, but we are here to challenge them to uh, help them to grow and to Help them to believe that they can do things maybe greater than they otherwise would have believed. And that's what challenging is about. So just we mentioned a few things quickly that we do at the school in the spirit of challenging students. Uh, Ms. Sands and I do a lot to, uh, when we post our spirit, to challenge our students to be ready for milestones. We know that some of those classes set milestones, but we think it's important. So we like to offer some incentives to make things fun for students to show that they're meeting their goals and milestones. We uh, started a few years ago the math weeks, which is uh, an emphasis on uh, basic math accuracy. And so Ms. Sands and I taught a bunch of math weeks on the bus a couple of weeks ago and took them to CDDs. It's just an incentive, just challenging them again to, to, to put a nose to grind and do what it takes to master the, that uh, math proficiency, fluency, and facts. Uh, we, we, in addition to that, we have a math B. You know, we haven't for years had spelling bees. But it occurred to us a few years ago, why don't we do a math B? So we started that a few years ago. We, that's another neat way to um, challenge students just to come in and do your best, show what you can do. Uh, we started uh, a few years ago what we call the writing B. Same thing's going to be math B. Why don't we do something to affirm students that are going to be the future great authors? We talked to them about, you never know when you might get a famous author coming out of the note one day. So we do a writing B. And the winners of the writing be at our school and the trade level, they get entered in this year's level competition for the Georgia Authors Contest. So that's been another great way to challenge students. Then, of course, the spelling bee, we've done that for years. Uh, we have a weekly iron challenge, which is about their work with our math program. We have the monitors in the hallway that shows each grade level uh, what percentage of uh, pass rate, what the pass rate percentage is that grade level that, that we get. So that's another way that we try to get a challenge from the students. Uh, let me finish this up with um, something new that we are doing this year, and I call it the RAISE program. And uh, that's an acronym that's uh, Reaching and Inspiring Student Excellence, is what that stands for. And we were trying to think of what can we do to reach a group of our students that we know are at risk, and quite frankly, we have obligations to serve. Um, with our consolidated funds, we know we've got to be able to demonstrate what we're doing to meet the existing purposes where we're targeting these need um, populations of our students. So we started raise this year and it began in January. And so three days a week, we have uh, there's 48 students right now being served in raise. They stay after school for um, 45 to 50 minutes of extra help, extra instruction focused on reading and math and on what the students need. If some students fall out of the load, some just one or the other. So we try to tailor that support for the need that, that student actually has. Uh, one of the things that's unique, I think, this year for us is when we've done these things in the past, we've relied on students, um, parents, to arrange their own transportation. And quite honestly, some of our students, many of them, who need this extra help, their parents aren't in a position to provide that transportation. So we did make it part of what this year to say. We will get a bus and we'll make sure your kids, if they want it, if you want them in the program, we like to be in the program, we'll make sure they get home safe and in the afternoon. So we really are excited about this opportunity to be to our students, and um, I'm really eager to see what kind of traction we get out of this. Thing. 
So again, thank you for all your support. Uh, to to share with you it's my pleasure to answer questions. Are there any questions for Dr. Roach? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we're going to have a motion to your doctor in a minute. So moved. Um, we have a motion by Mr. Smith, second by Dr. Nancy. All those in favor? Motion carries. Someone show Mr. Niles for mercy. So moved. We have a motion by Mr. Smith. Right. Second. A second by Mr. Norville. All those in favor? It looks good. <laughs> um, this is Pet. If you would come up and give us an update on the reach of the report. Good evening. I have an update on our reach uh, scholarship contributions uh, by our employees. Uh, so period is the 31st uh, to the payment section is $470.30. And three personal checks that ran through our client office and total of $400. So I have $70,000. Kathy, when will the next promotion window or campaign uh, be uh, rolled out? And for Bang and for United Way. I think we do now. Usually in the fall. Um, we had to request from our employees to try to get away from doing one every month versus allow them to choose. So we're trying to find United Way, Bang, and also Reach. Sometimes it felt like every month they would be an ask to die. Um, kind of got away from that a little bit in COVID because we did some of the pocket books were hurting a little bit. And so, uh, we can look at doing twice a year instead of once a year for each of the things. United Way is the United Way October drive is what it is. But the other two, we can look at walk. I think it's not a little lower than what we had last year. Uh, the previous year, so we need to we look at resetting that as the key. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Niles, give us a construction uh, update. Right. I thought I had a right. Yes, I do have a brief update. We'll start with Gainesville Middle School West. And again, just wonderful progress that's being made. Our target date is still, uh, we're still on target to complete it on time. Uh, this this uh, pro progress report covers uh, some of our site work that's 98% complete. Uh, concrete pours and construction land is completely done. The masonry is about 95 percent done. All of our finishes, common areas are done. Kitchen pour tile is about 98 percent done. Football field, uh, scoreboard is done. Uh, bleachers are in place. Gym flooring, uh, wood of the schedules go down uh, at the end of this week. Uh, the digital sign uh, will go in in March. And then there's several uh, photos. This is the main uh, main reception area. Mr. Now, to make sure that these are drop signals out. Certainly. But this just shows the main reception area there, the main office. And then it goes into the uh, mail room directly behind the main uh, reception area. And then this this third one is. Uh, the uh, drama, drama classroom has the acoustic ceiling, uh, tiles along the wall, uh, polished concrete, uh, flooring. And then the next one, this one is our band room. And it also has the band room storage there. Shelving is in place. This is our media center. Again, some of the casework being put in place. The carpet tiles are already down. And then this is the cafeteria. Uh, lighting, of course, is in place. They also, this week, have been working on the uh, tile flooring. Uh, that's about 9% complete. Then um, that's cool freezer. Both cools and freezers have been installed. 
and they're bringing them online, getting all those of the uh, connections done. And then I want to do this is corridor E. Just want to show you some of the uh, hallways that's already got the uh, block fill walls, ceiling tiles, uh, majority in place, uh, door and door frames that have been put in place. Uh, this is the art room, art room, uh, college concrete has been finished. And again, it just shows uh, room to the right, far right is the chem room, the next room is storage, uh, but it just shows the size of the art room. Then the last one is the landscaping that's already done and in place. Uh, again, first, second week in March, they'll be doing the uh, side of the football. That's our middle school boys. Jim, you are down there, like I suggested, it's a beautiful campus. All right, we are all invited to lunch there on Friday. We all got an invitation from the Carol Davis Drug Campus that requires an RSVP. It's this coming Friday. Okay. You can tell me who you can get it in our school. Right. And the lunch on Friday. Uh, Again, we'll uh, have some school personnel there. Uh, but again, just the time that uh, Caribbean always has, has this uh, near the end, uh, just a little thank you, Monty, for all of the subs, all of the uh, contractors that have been a part of the process, just a way of saying thank you. It allows uh, also just some of the staff that have been there to go and be a part of this lunch. Any other questions about the next school? All right, on to uh, the main event. Yeah, the next one's going to be student activity center there on the high school campus. Again, the uh, work is certainly in pro progress and certainly, again, on, on, on schedule and for its completion date. This is the main entrance that would be uh, down near the uh, Valentine Center. That would be the main entrance that, again, it just shows. Uh, they were able to do some of the uh, socket work and everything in the entrance doors. This is the walking track that overlooks the gymnasium floor. And uh, this was the framework of the walking track. As of now, it's all been pulled. Concrete walking track, all that's been done. Then this one just shows again uh, to the left, just shows some of the exterior brick. And asset colors being done on the exterior of the building. Uh, and it's again just moving along really well. If you drive out Century Place towards this video, you can see that entire end is placing the field. It is now completely free. Mm -hmm. Then I, I want to give you a drum view that just shows all the TPO roofing that's already in place. The last part to be put in place is, of course, open to good things. And set the drone view that again just looks at it from the two and four sides. Next one is uh, renovation work that's going on in Valentine Center. And the first, very first one is again, remember this entire front side did not have the brick exterior, it was just the uh, metal side. So we've done all of the brick exterior with accent brick as well as uh, new gutters and that spouse. Uh, Cut out a roll up door. Roll up door will go there. And those red doors now have also been replaced as well. Uh, bathroom stalls. All the bathroom stalls and fixtures have, have been put in place. You remember, if you look directly at the back wall, that's, that used to be a door where you could access the restroom from the outside where the track is. So we closed that off and added another stall. Uh, Put all the fixtures in, and then on that other side, outside, that would be some storage area. Then, high practice field phase one, uh, all of the, uh, of course, the center, of course, is all done. The artificial turf is all in place. Then, also from this one, all of now the asphalt has been put in place. So, all that's done, and the next couple of weeks, we'll also. Complete the uh, rubber at least to the track. I know there's been a lot of questions about uh, 
obviously the temperature is a big deal, but the, the rubber, but uh, can they practice on the asphalt? Asphalt is, is all down now. Right. All and right. Well, typically your mid and long distance runners can. Your sprints likely won't uh, just from uh, markings and handoffs and everything. Mm -hmm. The uh, it is finished. Do we have a time on the road with the rubber surface? I think the next two weeks. Biggest thing is the temperature. Got that. Mm -hmm. That's it. Phase one, phase two. This is up in the video. And again, just great work uh, being done at this time. All of the side matting is done. All of that's been complete as after this photo was taken. So all of that's cleaned up. Uh, there's not as much uh, water standing on the actual field itself. Uh, they put the drain pipe in. A lot of that's been drained out. But it just shows the size of it. And then this is another view. The red building is the uh, man building. And so this, again, just gives you a good view of the size that the pavilion would be. Um, I was asked, I forgot, are there going to be roll up, I guess, on the sides of the field? No, it's going to be exposed on the side for like 20 feet up, and then about 10 feet of metal, and then uh, the roof. Overall, it's going to be 52 feet tall. Mm -hmm. Still is expected to come in uh, late March. Then just the side front of me. That completes our report on the school activity center, uh, phase one, practice field, as well as phase two. A couple of things I want to add. One is that uh, we are looking at what the fencing options are around that both facilities um, just to try and control somewhat uh, how often those are used. Uh, you can imagine having two brand new turf fields like that. Uh, we want to have a little more security structure than we have before. Uh, the second part is we, we will be opening bids for the final building uh, there, this is the main academic building on March 3rd. Uh, so next Thursday, uh, we will then be able to bring forward, uh, hopefully within the next week or two, uh, a GMP for that three-story academic building that is the final project for all of our spots and bond projects. We do not have good news on the media center, correct? The media center is not quite up to functioning. Which media center? High school. It's not to the same way. What you're doing with staff and wiring and everything. Am I out of date? Yeah, sir. Yeah, all that's in kind of place. Um, the other thing we're waiting for is uh, we're working with a new media specialist to identify the software that's going to be in at the circulation desk and to help us work through the process of building the collection. So we're not fully functional yet in terms of you know, what the end thing is going to look like. Uh, but students are able to come in and use the space, yeah. but we're not right now with the software for circulation, but that's only because we're working through a new pipe. Any other questions, Mr. Niles? All right, thank you, Mr. Niles. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Allen? Mrs. Allen has the second reading of two policies. Which we will need to take another vote on. Thank you. Good evening. And the first policy that's up is the um, policy IHS, which are the graduation requirements entering fall 2008, 09, and thereafter. Did anyone have any questions regarding the policy? All right. Uh, we have a motion to adopt the policy. So we'll get yeah, motion by Mr. Mitchell. Second. Uh, second by Dr. Randy. Any questions? All those in favor? Motion carries. Okay, Mr. Thank you so much. And the second policy, um, the policy of ABC4, awarding units and transferring credit. Um, any questions regarding this policy? Oh, Ms. Allen, you are going to verify our check for our. Verbiage here, yes, or they should be called Carnegie units traditionally. Yes, sir. Um, so there was a um, 
just a, just a clarifying question about the wording for our policies regarding Carnegie um, units of credit. Um, that is a long-standing uh, verbiage that is um, embedded in the state codes. Um, currently, our policy does not um, does not include that in our codes, but we will be going back and referencing a prior policy to see um, what that verbiage and language is. It will make it adjustments as necessary. Motion for the motion. And motion by Mr. Smith is here, second. Second. And second by Mr. Mordor is all those in Mr. Jarius, thank you, Ms. Al. Thank you. Dr. Wood. Back in October, board, uh, we discussed a little bit about some of the work that had been going on over the last year plus of the ninth district opportunity. The committee members that we have here with us tonight, if y'all would please stand and let everybody know that you've been a part of our committee and working with this. Um, this could not happen without the work of the our community. Thank y'all. And part of that reason is there's been a discussion for a number of years about the buffer center, and especially the gym space, the classroom space, the locker room space. And when you look at the success we've had, Ms. Sanders is here with us tonight with the hub, being able to expand services and opportunities. So with ESSER funds as a part of our plan, uh, we have an agreement with Knight District Opportunity tonight as the board is approved. It, is, it will then go to Knight District Day at a board meeting on Thursday. That will then approve a three and a half million dollar agreement that allows us as Kansas City Schools to kind of operate the premises of that part of the building. It allows us to look at recreational activities uh, for the community, it allows us to look at non traditional education opportunities, support services through near tech, municipal housing authority, Hall County Family Connection. It really gives us a chance to expand what we offer with the hub uh, to a different part of the community that, that does have needs. And so it's been a long and winding road, I know, as a part of this. Uh, and I think they're here to make sure that it actually does go through. So if it does not pass, we've got some people maybe meeting outside a little bit. Uh, but I will say, you know, so as a part of this, and we've worked with the attorney, both our attorney and Knight District's attorney, uh, to look at the verbiage to make sure everything is tight. After both parties approve, we will send it to the Department of Education uh, because it is involving extra funds for their approval. Once that happens, uh, then that agreement can begin with Ninth District. The Ninth District will then move forward with whatever their construction procedures are as far as uh, taking those next steps. So, a lot of work. You heard a lot about it in, uh, in October, and tonight we're finally able to pull through and make this happen. We hear a motion to uh, enter into the NDO Public Center Agreement. Motion to approve the agreement pending the NCD on board approval. Second. Got a motion by Mr. Smith, got a second by Mr. Mitchell. All those in favor, I'll comment, please. This is uh, my thanks to all who worked on this, including Cassie Thomas and Kay Balls from uh, Night Sister Opportunity. This has been talked about for 40 years, and nothing concrete, no, no action plan has been able to have been agreed upon for various reasons. So, uh, thank you for your help. Thank you, Dr. Williams, for your leadership. Uh, let's move forward and, and be productive with that property. It's going to be complementary to the new park that's being built. Uh, it's going to be complementary to the Dyke District mission uh, to serve uh, neighbors in need. Uh, so, let's, let's move forward. This, this even addresses some comments we heard. Tonight, let's move forward. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Uh, motion carries okay. Uh, this is Bethel and January. I understand. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, January financial statements, uh, revenues for January 6.2 by 3 million year to date. 56.3 million, and that's 75.8% of our projected revenues collected for the year. This time last year, we were at 75.1%, so slightly higher uh, at this point this year. Monthly expenditures at 7.9%, year to date at 44.069%, which is 58.9% uh, extended for the year of our budget. 
This time last year, we were at 57.3, so that's slightly higher this year. Um, that can fluctuate in the next more impacts. Our ending fund balance for this year is 33.9 million. This time last year, it was 30.677 million. With encumbrances, we have an ending fund balance of 32.6 million. And we need a drum roll. <laughs> Plus receipts for the month at 1 million, 71,502.79. Motion to approve the next. Got a motion to approve the Mr. Smith. Second. Second by Dr. Randy. All of the third. So she did. Thank you, Mrs. Beth. Hello, oh, Mrs. Jones. Good evening. I would like to ask forward to approve the personnel recommendation as submitted. One thing I would like to mention on here, one of the uh, personnel items, um, Ms. Collins has been working very closely with the University of Georgia about a residency program. So you'll see number two on that list, uh, Sarah Padilla, as a teacher resident. Uh, Sarah is a senior at UNG. Uh, she's at high, Gainesville High School in Spring. So she teaches. Biology. Biology. Yes, and so it's a, it's a unique new uh, agreement where we will be paying basically half of the teacher's salary for them to complete their interest. They get to count towards TRS and, and years of credit in that way. And so we're really excited that Sarah is our first um, recipient here, and we look forward to adding more in the future. Just a great way to help build a pipeline of teachers and games students. Motion to approve. A motion by Mr. Smith. A second by Dr. Randy. All those in favor? Thank you, Mr. Jones. Any discussion on it? I hear a motion to adjourn into executive session. I a motion by Mr. Mitchell. A second by Mr. Norwell. All those in favor? Thanks, everyone, for coming. Wesley.